I'm going to introduce our panelists as we're coming up. We're going to try to get everybody settled in. It may be like the young man trying to build the blocks to get everybody on stage. If y'all would come on up, I'll introduce you as we come. Uh, Rhea, Bishop, uh, Rhea Williams Bishop, who is, uh, uh, has, has served on the MEC Board of Governors for a number of years, is one of our panelists today. She is the director of the Mississippi New Orleans uh, Program for Kellogg Foundation in Battle Creek, a long advocate of child care. Dr. Laurie Smith serves as the executive director of the State Workforce uh, Investment Board, but is also an advisor to Governor Bryant in, in, in what he does uh, every day in terms of policy, work very closely with the, Mrs., uh, the, um, the education works legislation that was passed. And then, of course, uh, also joining us will be uh, Caitlin Cordella, who is with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation. She serves as the uh, Director of Policy and Programs for the Chamber's Center of uh, their Education Workforce Center and really is focusing on those issues. Okay, I'm going to start with you, Caitlin, if I could. Uh, Dr. Stevens, just, C Catherine just spent a lot of time talking about, you know, why it's important for tomorrow. Why is this important? For today, especially for business. Yeah, um, I know what you're all thinking, that you saw that little boy build the blocks in perfect order and spent a lot of time and energy making sure that he got it perfect, and that is work ethic. You wanted to hire him on the spot, but unfortunately, he's not going to have working papers for another 20 years. So you have to hold off, right? And that's a lot of time we think about this challenge as a 20 years problem. We can solve it today, but we're not going to see the fruits of that labor until 20 years. And um, I think that's, that's unfortunately a, a real falsehood in this situation. The business community is dealing with this problem every single day, and we don't necessarily hit that nail on the head to say that this is an ECE issue. Um, right now in the, in the US, there's 6.9 million open jobs. And those jobs are open in a low, of course we have low unemployment, but we cannot find the qualified workers to fill those jobs. That's a, skill, that's a skills of tomorrow problem. But we also know that right now we have 60% of businesses cannot take on new work because they cannot fill that workforce. And 40% would take on, have the ability to take on new work, but they cannot fill the challenges that they're feeling in their own employees. <clears throat> so businesses are in the business of industry, right? But they're also in the business of employing. And this has become, uh, early childhood education has become a major barrier to employment for their incumbent workforce and their future workforce. We, have, uh, we do not have high quality childcare everywhere, right? And so we're competing for spots. And if you do not have a quality place to put your child, you're not going to be able to sit in your office and do the work that you need to do. Three billion dollars is lost annually on the breakdown of childcare services every single day. So um, <clears throat> I think the challenge is that companies are dealing with this right now, and we're not necessarily calling it out as an issue that is, that is an ECE issue right uh, in this state and across the U.S. So it's, it's an issue that exists, and I know that we're, we, we've looked at it at MEC for a number of years. We've talked about this issue. Laurie, from the public sector side of things. You, you've spent a little time in the private sector. You're also in the public sector now. What are we doing to maybe not reinvent the wheel, but really focus on these areas from a, from a quality child care approach that includes the education component? Well, I was thinking when she talked that we are actually doing a lot of things right to address this issue in Mississippi. So as the director of the State Workforce Investment Board, we're very focused on something called prepare, connect, and sustain with our workforce right now. So the sustaining part of our workforce, we have some great examples of business and industry right now that are doing the public-private partnership idea that you mentioned. So uh, Milwaukee Tools, many of you have heard me talk about in Greenwood, Mississippi, they, um, some innovative ideas of how our state's helping that directly relate to child care. Milwaukee Tools uh, has uh, added more jobs in our state recently and wanted to recruit more 
more women into the plant to work there. And so our Department of Human Services is working with them to open a child care facility uh, on site as well as a health care facility to help sustain their workforce and keep their employees working there. KLLM is doing the same thing, working with our state agencies where our businesses are getting assistance from our, our state agencies to help provide that child care quality. So we're, we're helping build the quality child care at the same time that we're helping the employer provide a high quality workforce. Uh, many of you heard about our $10.6 million grant award recently for early childhood education. I see Governor Bryant smiling a little bit there. Uh, very exciting. And what that grant will do will really help, uh, brought it up here with me, um, expand and uh, here it is, the, the family-based unified plan that Governor Bryant's uh, State Early Childhood Advisory Council uh, with Governor, uh, with uh, Mimo Parisi leading uh, the CCAC Council on that has is a family-based approach that focuses on helping the family get the services they need for job placement at the same time that we're providing high quality care. So multiple examples in our state of how we're leading the nation uh, in many ways, and this grant's a good example of that, of how we're working with business and industry and our government agencies to help provide the highest quality care that we can in our state. And that comes from years of, uh, of working with child care. I I was thinking while Catherine was talking, um, Mississippi Economic Council has been a leader on focused on this early childhood effort. I see Haley Fasakerly in the audience and others that have sponsored and focused on um, early childhood education for so many years. So I really attribute many of these successes to, to you all in the business community for bringing this to the forefront in the first place. And I, I guess this bringing it to the forefront is part of the key issue and I Rhea from a philanthropy standpoint from the Kellogg Foundation standpoint they helped they funded this this research that was done through the chamber by by Catherine why is it so important that we we're this is one of the focuses that we're looking at as we go forward so uh, Scott <clears throat> I thank you for the opportunity to serve on this panel uh, the WK Kellogg Foundation as you all if anybody that's had any affiliation with the work we do we are focusing on early childhood. That's one of the biggest components of our work. Um, and the fact that in the, the presentation that Catherine made, the fact that we uh, consistently see the linkages between workforce development and economic development, early childhood is key to that. I have to add to what Lori shared about the commitment of MEC. Uh, early on, about 20 years ago, we were sitting there kind of bumping each other and a, a little giddy. Uh, we, we, were, we were very young. We were teenagers when we started in this work. Um, but at any rate, the foundation has constantly and consistently invested in early child education because we understand the life cycle. From cradle to grave, there's an education life cycle. And early on, I'm so excited that our board and our leadership made the decision to put money into early childhood education. Uh, we've worked with uh, MEC and the business community throughout these years to help sponsor and be a part of the road shows that have consistently taken place, early childhood days at the Capitol, uh, Spark uh, initiatives called Spark, supporting partnerships to assure ready kids, Excel by five building blocks, all this work is really what has led to what we're able to realize today in the state in terms of acknowledging that early childhood education is important. And you know, we've had a number of meetings recently, uh, whether it's the annual meeting or previous uh, days at the Capitol, where business leaders have consistently said, you know, uh, we get people that don't have basic soft skills. We can teach them the, the technical stuff, the hardcore skills in, when they get to the workplace. But all the soft skills, and Secretary Hoseman pointed that out, things like character, uh, uh, work ethic, all those things are grounded and rooted in what is, of course, given by parents who are the first children's first teachers, but secondly, and most important, is what they experience as young children, as infants and toddlers, to prepare them to be able to learn and become successful students and ultimately successful employees in any business across the state. And, and Catherine, you, you've actually been 
looking at this from a, a nationwide standpoint, where does Mississippi fit in what we're doing to try to improve where we are today and, and so that we do have a better tomorrow? One of the reasons I'm so happy to be here is that, in fact, Mississippi is one of the absolute leaders in, in the country on this. Um, Governor Bryant has played an extraordinary role in recognizing just that, that the, the period of, 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 of uh, first three years of life, how critical those are, and I think what, what, what he's provided leadership on is understanding a two-generation approach that moves whole families ahead together. So when you have high quality childcare, you're doing two things at the same time. You're developing that young child, which is your workforce of tomorrow, and you're enabling that family to, to, to work and be self-sustaining and to move themselves ahead. So it's a two, childcare is the pivot point for a two generation approach that moves whole families ahead at the same time. And Mississippi is perhaps the leading state in the country in, in, in using that frame to think about, about how to move families ahead. Good job, Governor. Uh, Rhea, as we think down the road, what, what are some of the things that are ahead in this, in this area and, and what can we be doing as a business community to be focusing on? Yeah, a, a couple of things that I, I, I want to touch base on. I go back to Catherine's presentation and the concrete analogy. So Frederick Douglass said, and I'll paraphrase it, uh, you know, it's far easier to train young children than it is to fix or repair broken men. And he said that back in, what, the late 1800s. And it's still, it's still true today. So getting that message out, making sure that we focus on that, that not only folks in this room understand that, that we go back and share it with colleagues uh, across the state. But just as important, we need to realize that there are populations who are mo more vulnerable. You saw the graphs and the, the uh, information that she shared that gave the percentages and the breakdowns. If we realize, so the, one of the reports that we also funded was the business case for racial equity. In 20 years, when today's children are in, you know, entering the workplace, people of color will represent over half the working age population. So we need to make sure that we focus our emphasis and work with vulnerable children and children of color to make sure that that workforce is ready and productive and able to do the things we need them to do to help boost our economy. Uh, that's one of the major things that I wanted to point out. Um, the fact that if we, for every dollar that we invest in early childhood e education, it's a $13 return on that investment. So the business community, uh, has to realize, our legislative leadership has to realize, communities and parents across the state have to realize that we really cannot afford to take baby steps in the er area of early childhood education. We have to be in search of the quantum leap. Um, if you go and talk to any kindergarten teacher or pre-K teacher across the state, and find out how these students are doing, then you'll find out and know how we'll have the workforce that we need in 20 years. And, and Caitlin, the U.S. Chamber in, in general and, and, and state chambers across this, the country as well have been focusing really on workforce and education very intently over the last few years. The early childhood component uh, obviously is a big part of that now. So going forward, what do you see is, is the next steps? Sure, yeah, it's, you're hard pressed to find a business that isn't thinking about education and workforce as a major um, challenge and opportunity to really the sustainability of um, their industry or their company specifically. And so um, the chamber thinks about education and workforce as an entire pipeline starting at the earliest years and, and frankly never ending. We're always reinventing ourselves. We're always going back and, and looking at education as that ability to retrain or focus Focus on, on new efforts, and so we have to think about this as a lifelong learning enterprise. Um, 
Unfortunately, there's leaky leaky, a leaky pipe, right? And uh, the focus on ECE for us, and I credit Catherine a lot for, um, for the conversations that we had had probably, what, 20, 28 months ago at this point, where we thought about this as truly a two-generation approach because you cannot simply solve one piece and expect that to solve all of our problems. You have to be thinking about it as multidisciplinary and also focusing on the challenges that are unique to every community and every state. Um, and, and truly, we, we all applaud the work that you're doing in Mississippi. Catherine's gone around the country talking about this issue. I've gone around the country talking about this issue. And there's never a time that we're not calling out Mississippi as the place to be. So congrats. <laughs> and finally, Lori, put on your, your hat as not only an educator, policy person, but now focusing on workforce so intently as, as the executive director of State Workforce Investment Board. How do we find a way to do more programs? You mentioned Milwaukee Tools, some of these other. What, is, what do we do to really accelerate this to the next level? Well, I was thinking while all of you were talking that a lot of businesses don't know where to reach out to get information about how to do this. And so I'd like to point out that the State Workforce Investment Board would be a good point of contact. And that's exactly what happened with uh, Milwaukee Tools and the uh, other examples. We can connect those dots for you about how to build this child care piece on sustaining your, uh, your workforce at your industry. I think that's a good first start. And uh, I think it's such an important issue. There's been so many discussions in our state, a lot of times we think about early childhood and that means just pre-K and that means, oh, we're doing that in our state. We have four-year-old pre-K, we have the collaboratives, and those are all really wonderful, but um, we need to build both at the same time. So as we're building our pre-K system, continuing to build this coordinated system of child care combined as, a, as our, build, our workforce is growing, our business and um, workforce are growing at such a rapid pace, it's really important important we keep these uh, quality child care parts in, in, at the highest quality um, at the same time. So I would uh, like to just recommend that our um, Department of Human Services and uh, Department of Health that help coordinate those as well as SWIB are more than uh, willing to help. And our SWIB website is swib.ms.gov. Just my little plug. And one more plug, the Governor's uh, Workforce Summit for more information on all of these will be on uh, January 23rd. Uh, here at the Marriott, uh, and you can go to the website for more information on that as well. Would you all please join me in thanking our panel for being with us today. And a special thanks to Catherine for the work that she's done.